Now, if you want to talk about Neanderthals, right, this is the Neanderthal. We still don't know what their faces look like because, um, you know, there are different species of humans. And anytime you have a different species, you don't, you can't uh, assume what their faces look like. But we know that at least, uh, that we know that um, all non-Africans living today are, have no, I mean, pe people that, um, are black don't have Neanderthal DNA, while people that have straight hair do have Neanderthal DNA. It says about about 20% of distinctly Neanderthal genes survive today. So that means um, whether the person is Caucasian or whether the person is Indian or Asian, they're going to have from you know one to 20% Neanderthal DNA in their genome. And all right, so we're gonna read this a little bit really quick. Um, because it's also important to note, uh, you know, they, they, uh, the Neanderthals were pretty much only in the regions of, uh, you know, Asia and, and Europe and stuff like that. They weren't, they never came to the Americas. So for anybody, if you're going to try to say something like, oh, you know, because earlier we proved that 100,000, 130,000 years ago, uh, you know, they, were, they found uh, that there was black people in San Diego. But somebody might be like, oh, well, maybe those are Neanderthals, because you can find that on the web, too. So they're like, oh, maybe they're Neanderthals that were there. But Neanderthals never came out here. They didn't have boats. They didn't, they weren't smart enough, you know. Neanderthals were actually more like, uh, you know, abominable snowmen, more like snow gorillas, you know, cannibal snow, because, snow, you know, gorillas are vegetarians, vegans, right? But Neanderthals were actually more like, you know, gorillas that, um, highly intelligent, you know, snow gorillas. And they might have had night vision too. We don't even know. Like a cat. And they might have had like cat eyes. We don't even know. Because the thing is, Neanderthal, a Neanderthal child could, you know, take out Mike Tyson with ease. You know, Mike Tyson could never beat up any Neanderthal. That's how strong the Neanderthals were. Their eyeballs were the size of, uh, of, of, uh, like small oranges. So I'm going to type in this thing called Super Predator. Type super predator Neanderthal, ne not the Hillary Clinton super predator, but super predator Neanderthal. There we go. And uh, um, so I'm going to click on this really quick. So this is very, very important. This is the current accepted view of what Neanderthals look like. A bit hairy than us and with a lot of the nose and thicker brow ridges. But apart from that, they're unquestionably human. In fact, it's been said that if you gave a Neanderthal a shave, a haircut, and dressed him up in a nice suit, he could easily attend Harvard, although he'd need rich parents. There's a couple of things wrong with this picture. First, it's not based on... So, the, the, oops. So, he's saying that... This, this lecture is saying that, is, is proving that um, this whole thing of, like, Neanderthals looking like white people is fake. Neanderthals did not look like Caucasian people because Neanderthals, their eyeballs were the size of, like, an orange. And their forehead was like, you know, they had a short, small forehead. Like, they didn't look like humans, you know. Like, even though um, uh, Caucasians, Asians, and Indians share um, up to 20% of their DNA, they did not look like humans. The hair is the same, but we don't know what their faces really look like. So this guy, he's doing a, another theory, another um, reconstruction. Because these are all the reconstructions that you're going to see in museums and things like that. And it's important to note that... In museums, you know, these are things coming from the 50s and 70s and 40s and 20s, super racist eras. So, you know, they try to make a lot of people look more black or something in the past. Like Neanderthals and whatnot. Notice how they make their noses look big or something. But, you know, Neanderthals, they might have had no nose, like a um, gorilla. Because if you type in uh, the, the last Neanderthal, I'm going to type last Neanderthal. And we go to the picture. The last ne known Neanderthal was a, a woman. I'm going to find her picture in uh, in the, one of the Russian dynasties. See, they're even suppressing her her uh, her picture. I forget what her name was, but I'm going to look it up. Russia. Oh, here we go. This is it. See, yeah, they don't want to show this picture. See, so this is this is a a real drawing. This is the um, a drawing from uh, a Russian Tsar era. Right, this is the last known captured Neanderthal. Right, they say the Neanderthals were wiped out about thirty thousand years ago. Right, and uh, remember, so then there was a, um, and 
the Neanderthal genes were added to the human genome about 55,000 years ago. So, you know, if you take 55,000 minus 30, that's about 15, right? Um, I'm sorry, not 15, that's uh, 25, right? 25, right? So, um, so that's like 25,000 years of overlap, right? So there's 25,000 years where uh, there were um, the homo, uh, homo sapiens, those are black people, and Homo sapien Neanderthal is hybrids, and that's Asian, Indian, and, uh, you know, and uh, anybody with straight hair, right? Caucasian people, right? But you see her nose is more like a gorilla nose. They drew her nose as an inverted nose. So anytime you see like a drawing of a Neanderthal and they try to make him have a heavy brow and this and that, their nose and they have a Caucasian nose or a black nose or whatever, all that's fake. The only picture that was actually drawn of a of the last known Neanderthal uh, was this was this picture, right? And this is a drawing from uh, the Tsar era, right? So this is uh, we're gonna click on this, right? So this ape woman who could be, right? So she this uh, you know, and they they tested her DNA too, like they have her DNA, her grave, her two sons. This is a real woman. A very, very, they said her skin was very gray. She did not like to, uh, be in the, um, in clothing. Like when they put clothes on her, she would just rip them off. And, and they said she was also able to, uh, you know, they found her in the woods in Russia, not in Siberia, but they found her in Russia. So, you know, they said she was able to handle the extreme cold weather. So her skin was very gray. All right. So this, so I'm going to go back to what I was just playing. And this is showing that Neanderthals did not look like people. We have that drawing, right? And all these other things are fake. That drawing was a real drawing from a Russian czar. Skin I mean, a, you know, like a scribe of a Russian czar, artist of a Russian czar. You know, it was during the Russian czar era. Color and eyeballs are not preserved in the fossil record. So he's saying that the fossil record never preserves what an animal looks like. So we can only assume what Neanderthals look like. But, you know, so we don't know what their noses look like, except that one picture that was the drawing. The is that after studying Neanderthals for 10 years, I'm convinced they look nothing like this at all. So what he's going to do, so yeah, these are all things that you'd find in museums now. So he's going to use logic and recreate what the Neanderthal would look like. So let's keep playing some of this. Construct Neanderthal faces from their skulls. Now this forensic process works fine on humans, but that's because we know the shape and position of our noses, ears and lips. We know the thickness and texture of our skin, and we know the shape and size of our eyeballs. These soft tissue features are unique to humans. You would never use them to reconstruct the face of a chimpanzee or gorilla. And yet, scientists always use human facial characteristics and dimensions to reconstruct the animal faces. So it's inevitable that you end up with something that looks like a human. It's spurious science. So he's saying that you can graft a human face onto any skull. You could take a dog skull or a you know, a monkey skull or a squirrel face and, and, you know, put a human face on it. So all this stuff is fake. Television all this stuff with the Neanderthal with the big brow, you know. often use actors to portray Neanderthals. This involves hours and hours of meticulous makeup, which the producers assure us is 100% anatomically accurate. But it's not. And one reason is that Neanderthal eyes were in a different position in their skulls compared to humans. They were higher up, about where forwards are. So he's saying that the Neanderthal um, eyes were in a different position. They they had a very they had basically no forehead, right? And they had, and they had huge eyes. So look at that. This is a human face, a human proportion. This is a black human, right? This is the Homo sapien, right? And this is the Neanderthal, right? And Neanderthals were cannibals and 100% meat eaters. The only time they ever ate vegetables was when they ate the stomach of an animal that ate some uh, vegetables and, and they got to eat what was inside the stomach. All right, that was the only time. Now, there were some, they found Neanderthals that were eating vegetables that were in really like fruitful regions like in Spain and, you know, maybe some places in Southern Europe, maybe France too. They did find some Neanderthals that were, you know, not just eating a 100% meat diet. But Neanderthals are more like, you know, gorillas that ate meat. You know, like, they could probably beat up gorillas, you know. But they're just more like very intelligent. And judging by the size of their organs or eye sockets, yeah. 
So look how big their eye sockets were. Their eyeballs were huge. If we saw a Neanderthal, we'd be freaked out. We wouldn't be like, oh, that guy looks like, you know, he just needs a shave and put him some new clothes on. It's not like, it'd be it's more like Harry and the Hendersons. Eyes were also considerably larger as well. So if George Clooney ever had to play a Neanderthal, he'd need to have a serious facelift. Exactly. See, that's what they would look like. We would be freaked out if we saw them. They wouldn't look human. Neanderthals were not human, right? And even the nose, like he was saying. And you'd need larger eyes as well. When you actually look at the hard evidence, you soon see that Neanderthal skulls and human skulls were fundamentally different. This is the Neanderthal skull. It's got a protruding face, large eye sockets, and very prominent brow ridges compared to a human skull. Look at that. Very different. That's a human skull, right? That's a, a black person's skull, right? Because we see that, you know, it's got the signature black conical head, and then we see this, right? Neanderthal. Quite different. Very different. There's another reason why Neanderthals don't look like humans, and that's to do with the environment. Basically, we know from Darwin that it's the environment that largely determines what an animal behaves like and looks like. In the case of the Neanderthals and humans, they evolved on completely separate continents. Humans evolved in the temperate, warm, fertile savannas of Africa. Neanderthals evolved in the frozen glacial wastelands of Ice Age Europe. In fact, the two species, when they met again, had been apart for over half a million years. It's inconceivable from a Darwinian perspective that Neanderthals and humans would still resemble each other after half a million years. Exactly. All this suggests to me that Neanderthals did not look like humans. Right, it's all fake. This is all fake. All you go to go to all these museums, they're just showing you fake stuff. It's all fake. Neanderthals did not look like people, right? So that means, you know, because um, if you talk about Caucasian people in human history, they only go back 7,000 years. Because, so, you know, a lot of times, they're oh, but Neanderthals were here hundreds of thousands of years. Yeah, but they didn't look like people. They didn't look like Caucasian people. Neanderthals did not look like humans. This is an interesting question. These are all fake. What did they look like? So he's going to uh, get some, some forensic people to make... Um, you know, Once you get rid of all the use the evidence. Bias and the inherent flaws in the reconstruction technology, answering this question is not particularly difficult. And that's because, ultimately, Neanderthals were members of the order of primates. They were primates. And as such, you would expect them to maintain the appearance of primates. The fact that humans no longer look like their primate ancestors is, I believe, due to completely unique ecological and environmental circumstances, which I describe in my book. These circumstances certainly didn't apply to Neanderthals. So in light of that, you would expect them to maintain the appearance of a tall, bipedal primate. Once you acknowledge that Neanderthals were primates, you start to see similarities between them and other primates. For example, when I compared the this is why this is why Neanderthals never were in the U.S. because they couldn't build boats, right? Monkeys don't build boats. A monkey can make a tool. A monkey can you know take a stick and knock you in the head or take a rock and hit something. But monkeys aren't uh, you know they're not uh, organized, right? Oh, the Neanderthal with a chimpanzee, they seem to fit amazingly well. For my book, Them and Us, I commissioned... So you see that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to that. That's very important. He put it next to a chimpanzee skull. Whoops. So look, that's a Neanderthal skull and a chimpanzee skull overlaid. This is a Neanderthal. This is a chimpanzee. So clearly, Neanderthals were like basically highly intelligent uh, chimpanzees that were, um, you know, eating a 100% meat diet. You know, 99% meat diet. They seem to fit so they probably could have messed the chimpanzee up because, you know, um, all right. For my book, Them and Us, I commissioned one of the world's best digital sculptors to create a completely new forensic reconstruction based on my theories. We began by scanning the skull of a French Neanderthal. Then over several months and hundreds of emails and phone calls between Spain and Australia, 
a creature gradually emerged. See, exactly. Neanderthals were not human. They did not look human. They were basically like when we talk about Bigfoot and Sasquatch and all that type of, uh, you know, so-called conspiracy stuff. That's what the Neanderthals were. Neanderthals were the Bigfoots. You know, they were snow gorillas, like an abominable snowman. You want to call it Yeti, call it whatever. This is, you know, a more accurate reconstruction. Because all these other reconstructions are more just kind of colonial anachronisms. All right. I'm going to keep playing some more of this. Look like modern primates is an interesting clue, but it only goes so far. That's because modern primates come in all shapes and sizes. And there's a good reason for that. They've simply adapted to very specific regional, ecological and environmental circumstances. And we would expect the same of Neanderthals. So to create a more nuanced picture of Neanderthal physiology, we need to understand the specifics of their environment. And we know a great deal about that. It was Ice Age Europe, a frozen glacial wasteland, described as the most inhospitable environment ever occupied by hominids. This was the environment that shaped every aspect of their physiology and behaviour. Take the issue of body hair, for example. Were Neanderthals hairless like us? Or did they have body hair like all the other primates? Well, if you look at the animals that lived in Ice Age Europe at the same time as Neanderthals, you see that they all had thick, dense coats of body hair. Exactly. The woolly rhino, the Eurasian cave lion, the cave bear, all had thick fur coats. And that makes sense. Isn't now, it? we're going to go to a concept called, I'm going to type in woodwozer. So for, your, for those that don't know, I'm going to type in woodwozer. And I'm going in. This is at you, Justin, uh, Justin Time and DJ Toltec. So a wood woozer. All right. So for those that don't know what a wood woozer is, let's see. Wood woozer. Or I guess wood woes. All right. You can call that a woods woe. So wood woes or wild men. Right. I'm going to click on Wikipedia. And look at this. Look at that. Wood woes. Wild men. Men covered in fur. Right. And generally, they, people would call that hertuism. Here, I'm going to type that hertuism, or or here's suitism. Here's suitism. I was saying it wrong. All right, and I'm going to type here's. Oops, I'm going to type. Let me find it in Wikipedia. Hertuism wiki. Where's the wiki version? This, is, this lecture's turning out long again, but it's cool. This is an important lecture. All right, now. There we go. Here to ism, right? So look at that, right? There we go. That's the connection between Neanderthals and, you know, Homo sapien Neanderthalis, right? This is here to ism. You don't see this in African people, right? You only see this in either Europeans, Middle Eastern people, Indian people, right? You don't, right? So this is here to ism, right? And if I type, um, so here to ism is excessive body hair in men and women on parts of the body where hair is normally absent or minimal. It may refer to a male pattern of hair growth that may be a sign. So it's basically just being covered in hair, right? So I'm going to go back. I'm going to type here to ism and I'm going to type or here, um, her suitism actually I'm saying it wrong, right? And I'm going to look at the images, right? And see what comes up, right? We see people covered in hair, right? Um, they're not showing the people fully covered in hair, right? But uh, this this is, you know, showing what it's supposed to be look like. So I'll type people covered in hair. So people covered, whoops, ed in hair. All right, so this is people covered in hair, all right? Now, if you want to learn more about the creation of how, how that happened, how humans and Neanderthals mixed together, if you want to learn about that, so you see, you know, Neanderthals would probably have looked more, you know, not like this, because remember, their eyes were higher up in their head. The eyes would be up here, right? But obviously, the hair traits, remember, we ascertained that up to 20% of of uh, non-African DNA contains uh, uh, up to 20% of Neanderthal DNAs. 
So um, now we see all these different examples, right? Right? Now we're going to go back to this book here. And we're going to we're going to go back to the book America. Right. This is the first book. Right. It's called America. Right. The first book called America that they're not teaching in American history classes. Right. The name, the title of the book is called America, literally written in the 1600s by Arnaldus Montanus. And we see this. Um, let me see. Let's go to here. Let's I'm going to try to find uh, this one part. You know what? Actually, I have it somewhere else. I have it over here somewhere. I have it. I already have it loaded up. So I don't have to go through the whole book. I think I have it loaded up somewhere over here. Let's see. It's an actual, uh, let's see. Maybe, you know what, I'm gonna, let's see, Toltec search, Toltec Omic. All right, so now, so yeah, we're wrapping things up soon, um, but I just wanted to show you all this right here. Right here is this right here. This is from the same book, America, right? And we see a, a black Native American, right? And who do we see attacking him? Who's attacking them? Who, who we call this person? Obviously, this is like a Caucasian person, but obviously he's covered in a lot of hair. He's like a wild man. And it goes back to this. This is called, these are called wild men. There were real wild men in the woods like that, attacking people, jumping out like a, you know, jumping, living in the woods, right? Right? We see that's the wild man. You can also call them a wood woes, wood woeser, right? Right? Look at that. You know, you could say these are all fables or t tales, but we see that um, there are real uh, people with that. And there's whole tribes of people that are covered in here. It's a real thing, right? And so we're going to click on this, right? We can see there's people that weren't wood woeses, and then there was wood woeses coming in, right? And interacting with them, right? So there was different groups of people, different, different tribes of Homo sapien Neanderthalus hybrids. Right, so look at that. All right, we see that this is these are called wood woeses, right, or wild men. And a lot of original European coat of arms have a wood woes on it. So these, some of these are, you know, coat of arms, right? So I, I believe this is a maybe a coat of arms of uh, somewhere. All right, now look at this. See that these are wood woeses, right? This is wood woes, wood woes. Right. So this isn't the same as like a Bigfoot. This is more of like a wild man that's covered in hair. This is more like the disorder that we just uh, covered. Right. I guess here's here's Right. Or her Right. So these are different co coat of arms that, are, that all have like wild men. And you can see even like Zeus and a lot of these, you know, European gods and stuff like that come from some of these figures. Right. Right. And look at this right here. What do we have here? We have black Germans. These are black people. Like, remember I was saying, uh, black people have been, in, uh, are the original people of Europe, and we only got expelled in 1492. So this is black people in Germany before 1492, um, and they're, and look who they're fighting. This is in the year 400, right? Tapestry, wild men and Moors, black people, circa 1400, Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. So this is black people in Germany fighting off who? Wood woeses. Wild men. And, and many of them, if any of y'all seen that movie Fantastic Planet, they're kind of wearing these like kind of jumpsuit one kind of suit things with a bunch of like almost like camouflage, you know. And that's this is, uh, you know, and look at this. We got wood woeses again, different coat of arms showing the different wood woeses over time. Right. Some are totally covered in hair and some aren't. So these modern ones are, are have less hair on them. Right. Over time. We see less hair and it just comes down to being like, you know, a guy with the big beard, right? Like our figure, that, you know, what they teach us like as God or whatever, you know? Like, like we were all brought up and like, hey, this is God. This is what God looks like. It's a, a Caucasian guy with a long beard. And look, he's got the club, right? So that whole club thing, uh, you know, that, that's, that's a real thing. When you're talking about cavemen and stuff like that, that's what this is. So this is to Justin, uh, you know, Justin, DJ Justin Time and uh, at Toltec, you know, this, these are facts. I'm dropping, uh, this is, this is real. This is wood woes. This is wood woes in Wikipedia, right? We're seeing a lot of different examples. All right. So we're done with that. So we got wood woeses, right? All right. And once again, this is a uh, part of a, a real thing, right? This is wood woes, right? 
right? See that? This is real. And notice, do you see any black people in any of these pictures? Do you see black, are there any black people that are covered in fur? There's not. Because we weren't mixed into different, you know, our genome wasn't mixed into uh, Neanderthals like that. You see that? That's real. This is all real. N none of this is, none of this is all real. All right. So, yeah, enough of that, because I'll do a whole lecture on that in the future. But this is just to ascertain, you know, and this is the first drawing of a Neanderthal that we've ever been able to uh, come in contact with. Right. Uh, drawn by in a, in a Russian dynasty. All right. And they did the DNA tests on her. All right. All right. So at night, because one, he's talking about their teeth. Right. They, they were totally cannibals and, or not just cannibals. They were meat eater, 100 percent meat eaters. And they also ate each other. Right. And, you know, if you go to the um, cold climates, you know, he's, he also purports that maybe they were able to see at night because, let's see, he's talking about night vision. All right. So, you know, so there were, you know, they've proven that, uh, you know, that, that Neanderthals and humans overlap for a very long time and there's all types of wars.